Mini cutting or losing a lot of fat very quickly in about a month has become very popular. However, I think it's not such a good idea. Let's break down the signs. Welcome back, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf, back in the Wolf Coaching headquarters, and today we're talking about mini cutting. Let me briefly break down for you what mini cutting really is before we go into why it may not be optimal. Mini cutting is a period of typically four to eight weeks of a relatively aggressive calorie deficit that leads to you losing on average about 1% of body weight per week. So let's say you weigh 150 pounds. On average per week, you would be losing one and a half pounds for a total of over four to eight weeks, six to 12 pounds. That's a lot of weight loss over the course of four to eight weeks. And this is exactly where the problem arises. On principle, if you could mini cut and only lose fat, that would be sweet. But the issue is whenever you're cutting, you're creating an unfavorable environment for muscle growth. And in fact, if it's unfavorable enough, you might even be losing muscle. Well, what does the science say about how fast you can cut without losing muscle? If we do cut and we lose some fat, but we lose a bunch of muscle alongside it, that might not really be what you wanted. After all, my assumption is that you're losing weight in order to lose fat predominantly. So let's break it down. The best resource we have is a meta-analysis and meta-regression by Murphy and colleagues looking at the effect of calorie surpluses or deficits alongside lifting weights on muscle mass gain. Depending on the analysis you're looking at, they included up to 50 studies within this meta-analysis. What did they find? Well, the fastest people could lose weight without also losing muscle mass or lean body mass was about a deficit of 500 calories per day. For context, a pound of fat contains about 3,500 calories of energy. So if you wanted to lose one pound of fat per week, that would put you right around a 500 calorie daily deficit. So from the results of this study, you might go away thinking, the fastest I can lose weight without also losing muscle mass is about a pound of body weight per week which if you remember the figures I mentioned earlier, about 1% of body weight per week. That's substantially slower than 1% of body weight per week, as is often done with mini cutting. And well, you would be right. The only case in which a pound a week would also be around 1% of body weight per week would be if you weighed around 100 pounds. I can safely say that for most of us, we weigh substantially more than this. And so we need to think about, do we want to cut this fast or do we potentially want to slow it down a little bit? To discuss exactly how fast you can lose weight and why mini cutting might not be ideal, Deal, let me give a few caveats to this 500 calorie per day deficit rule. First of all, it is likely dependent on your body weight. If you're a huge individual who weighs say 300 pounds while being relatively lean, there's a good chance you can get away with more than a 500 calorie deficit per day and still retain muscle mass. This is going to be especially true if you're somewhat higher in body fat. Equally, how fast you can lose fat without gaining muscle very much depends on the conditions in place for muscle gain. If, for example, you have great genetics, you're on steroids, you're new to lifting, and you have a really effective training program in place with plenty of protein, there's a very good chance that you can have a larger deficit than 500 calories per day and still retain muscle mass perfectly well. However, on the flip side, if you're working full-time, you're highly stressed, your sleep is rough, you have relatively poor genetics, even losing a pound a week might cause you to lose some muscle mass. So one minor caveat of these findings is that the people within these studies may not have been training as optimally as you are. And therefore, you could potentially be losing weight a little bit faster on account of having better conditions for muscle retention on account of having a better training program in place. In the first couple weeks of a deficit or of a cut, you will typically see a reduction in body weight larger than we'd expect from just deficit on account of reduced muscle glycogen, which binds with water, on account of lower food weight, on account of lower fiber weight, on account of lower sodium. And all of these things can cause the first two weeks of weight loss to make you shed a lot more weight than you would expect. And so if in the first couple weeks of losing weight, you lose more weight than say half a percent a week, do not worry. The final caveat I wanna to give to the 500 calorie deficit rule, or whatever you wanna call it, is you can regain muscle relatively easily. There's this phenomenon called muscle memory, which if you want to see me speak about, leave a comment down below and I'll make a video about it. But essentially muscle memory dictates that you can regain lost muscle a lot more easily than you gain that muscle in the first place. And so even if you do lose some muscle, for example, while mini cutting or cutting above a certain rate, you may simply be able to regain it pretty easily after you go back into a surplus, for example. So that is great news if you're just cutting to look a little bit better for summer, or if you just want to lose some weight for health, because all that means is that once you're done cutting, even if you lost some muscle mass, you can just go back into a surplus and regain that lost muscle. However, if you're competing in say a physique sport like bodybuilding, or if you're competing in a strength sport like powerlifting, you likely want to keep that muscle around 
by the deadline of your cut. If, for example, you're cutting for a show, or if you're cutting in preparation for powerlifting meet, where you want to make a certain weight class, in those conditions, muscle loss is not acceptable, and so we do want to keep muscle loss to a minimum. What this means is if you're just recreationally cutting, you can cut a little bit faster if you're okay with losing muscle. If you're cutting for a competition, generally, you'll want to cut a little bit slower to minimize the risk of losing muscle. But this begs an important question. How do you tell that you're losing muscle to begin with? Let's say you're cutting already, you're cutting at a reasonable pace, how do you know? Well, there's about three things I want you to know. Number one, is looking at performance within the gym. Usually, you'll notice a slight drop off in your performance when you first start cutting. However, past this point, assuming you're not undergoing a drastic body transformation where you're losing a bunch of weight, typically, performance changes should be relatively minimal. Secondly, if you have access to a really good measurement method, like for example, a DEXA scan or an MRI, these can be used. You just have to keep in mind that they're not going to be perfectly accurate. Finally, the really important thing is, if you've set up things properly, an effective training program, a relatively reasonable deficit, not too excessive, you kind of just have to trust that you've set things up properly to begin with. Now that we've discussed the evidence, let me give you some takeaways. First of all, slow and steady seems to win the race. Mini cuts probably aren't the best idea because of this. If you're losing much more than about half a percent to maybe 0.75% of body weight per week on average, there's a good chance that you're risking muscle loss. Within the first couple weeks of starting a cut, more than this is acceptable. However, after that, probably not advisable. If you're going to lose weight at a rate of about 0.5% of body weight per week or 0.75% of body weight per week, that typically will correspond to about a four to 700 calorie deficit. The exact amount that you're putting yourself in a deficit should be dependent on your body size, on your conditions for muscle retention and other stuff. Anyways, that's the video. If you liked the video with the swag in your background, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I'll see you guys, my subscribers, in our next one. Peace.